What happens when a man, considered one of the greatest warrior kings in history, suddenly becomes a benevolent, generous man? Well, I'm sure you came up with answers like peace, love, prosperity, and patriotism, which are all technically not wrong. But what if I told you starting a secret society is one of the outcomes of such a drastic transformation? What if I told you there are bits of human history that are believed to have been shaped by this great ruler? What if I told you his society controlled the advancements of the world as we know it, and many of the world's famous scientists, among others, were a part of this society? What if I told you they still existed even to this day? Hello there, and welcome back to Mysteries and Facts, where we discuss some of the weirdest, most mysterious, and scariest stories from all over the world. And today, we'll be focusing on one from the great nation of India. We start today's video in the year 304 BCE, when a baby boy was born in present-day Patna, India, which was called Pataliputra at the time of his birth. This was in the era of the Mauryan Empire. This baby boy would be named Ashoka, which means without sorrow. This is probably how his family felt when he was born. This is because he was not born into just any ordinary family, but one of power, prestige, and wealth. He was the grandson of Chandragupta Mirya, the man who defeated Magadha and became the first ruler of the Mauryan dynasty. His father was Bindasara and his mother was Subhadrangi. History records state that from an early age, his father entrusted him with a lot of responsibilities which included being sent to suppress rebellions in various locations in the dynasty. He was, however, not the only son of Bendasura, but he was the one he typically trusted with these duties. With time, his father took over from his grandfather and reigned until he died in 270 BCE. His father had often met his counselors trying to decide who will take over from him after his death, but had not made it explicitly clear. This created a little struggle among his sons, but Ashoka eventually took over the throne around 269 to 268 BCE. He was, after all, quite experienced, having run many errands for his father in his youth. On assuming the throne, he continued in the ways of his father, which was conquest. He too waged wars and crushed many rebellions in his time. He was able to end the rebellion against his empire in Ujjain and Takshashila. He also reasserted the power of his empire in the west and south India as well. He was simply an excellent commander who was as strategic as he was valor. This earned him the title Ashoka Chakravarthi, which means Ashoka the King of Kings. Some historians, however, disagree. Some suggest he was referred to as Chandashoka, which means Ashoka the Fierce. A man who is known for crushing rebellions is most likely going to be fierce. Some North Indian texts, like the Ashoka Vedan, have these inscriptions in them. It's said that one of the biggest conquests was the war he waged against Kalinga, which is Odisha today. He was successful in his conquest, but at a great cost. Over 100,000 to 150,000 men were lost in this war. 10,000 of them were his own men. Aside from this, more lives could still be lost and were thrown into chaotic living because of the destruction and the aftermath of the war. Ashoka could not process this. He could not believe he could be responsible for the death of so many or that so much property could be destroyed in such a short time. Being a personal witness to all this did not help him either. Sure, he had won the war, and sure, he had triumphed over Kalinga, but at what cost? Was it really worth it? These plagued Ashoka, and he was overwhelmed with guilt and remorse. He sought a power higher than himself and started to follow the techniques of Buddhism. This changed his perspective on life, and he became a completely different person. The once excellent war general started practicing Ahimsa, which preached non-violence to any other living being, be it human or animal. In fact, Animal hunting was banned as he followed the path of the Dharma, which taught non-injury to any animal. The Chandashoka had now become a compassionate and merciful man who no longer wanted anything to do with violence. But what has all this got to do with a secret society? Once Emperor Ashoka had turned away from conquest, his new philosophy for life was that knowledge was power, and the key to preserving that power was to collect, nurture, and use it for great deeds. And as much as this was noble, Emperor Ashoka also believed that once this knowledge fell into wrong hands, it could prove truly catastrophic. 
The last thing he wanted was for the masses to get hurt again. He then decided to make the society a secret one that will operate from the background. It looks like having more than 100,000 people die in the Kalinga War really took a great toll on the Emperor more than many at the time may have realized. His aim now was to collect individuals of profound intellect and experience with the purpose of them helping him to make sure the world never experienced such things again. He then summoned nine of the most brilliant minds in India at the time from the major disciplines that existed at the time to be part of the secret society. The society was expected to be made up of nine men at all times, and should any of these nine die, fall sick, or simply quit the group, a worthy member will be chosen by the remaining in his place, so the number never changes. This was so secretive that not many knew about it, and up until now, we know so little about it. This should not come as a surprise to anyone since it is a secret society after all. It was meant to be kept a secret, and they did their best to do just that. But like all secret societies, we eventually found out a little about the institution, or they allow us to find out some information to throw us off course. Bits of information regarding the society have since leaked, and it has come to be known as the Nine Unknown Men, or Ashoka's Nine Unknown Men, but we'll refer to them as Ashoka's Nine Mystery Men. These nine were supposed to be experts in the field for which they were called. The fields were physiology, microbiology, alchemy, gravity, light, cosmology, sociology, and propaganda. Ashoka believed that knowledge from these fields combined could make a king great. What's more, it could help create a better world for the people of the world. Despite the advancements made in each of these disciplines today, it is believed that the knowledge amassed by these nine over the years may be much more advanced than what we have today. An English writer by the name Talbot Mundy did a lot of research on the society and even examined transcripts by the great Ashoka himself. From his research, he discovered that the Nine probably had written books on these various fields based on the advancements they had made. His research helped shed a little light, even if small, on some of the achievements and feats of the Nine. Take physiology for instance. It is believed that the Nine had uncovered a way to kill someone with just a touch and had written it in their book for physiology. And yes, you heard that right. They had discovered a way you could kill someone by simply touching them. The way this works is by reversing the pulse of the individual, killing him instantly. They refer to this as the touch of death. This is something that can also be found in Kaloripea too, which is a form of material art so old that it is considered the mother of most modern forms of martial arts, including Kung Fu and Karate. Those that practice this martial art were also rumored to have been able to kill with just a touch. Perhaps this can be linked to the Nine. Who knows? In communication, the Nine were interested in more advanced forms of communication than simply studying syntaxes, which regarded to human language. Talbot's research emphasizes that the Nine discovered and developed advanced communication methods that allowed them to achieve advanced means of communication without needing as much equipment as we do need today. It is actually believed that they were able of communicating with extraterrestrial beings. Simply put, they could talk to aliens. This opens up a whole new conversation on if aliens are real, but this is a subject we'll cover in a future video. If you haven't clicked the like or subscribe button yet, this might be a good time to do so. In the field of gravity, it's actually believed that the Nine had detailed designs and directions which could lead to the construction of the Vedic Vimana. This is believed to be an ancient spacecraft that was quite advanced, perhaps more advanced than what we've built today. This is because it is based on gravitational principles and secrets that the world as we know it is yet to unlock. Whether they have built it or not, we have yet to find evidence. But nonetheless, it is believed such intricate designs exist in their books on gravitation. They had also achieved great heights in microbiology. Yet, this is one of the areas we have little to no knowledge on their feats. Propaganda is one of the dangerous of the books and areas studied by the Nine. With knowledge from this field, they could topple governments without even trying. It is believed that groups like the Nazis could have attained some manuscripts of the Nine and used them in their conquest, which would explain why so many blindly followed them. With sociology, they studied the guidelines of society's progress as well as ways and methods they could predict its destruction. In cosmology, they had great concerns for the universe. It is also believed that they studied light and were able to find a way to utilize its speed and other properties as a weapon. 
The Nine also achieved transmutation with alchemy, which allowed them to change the form of a metal. For instance, they were capable of converting other metals to gold. Some believed that they would use this as a means to donate gold to temples which would explain how many temples have gold in them. It is believed that the group continued to live on even after Ashoka died in the 37th year of his reign, 232 BC to be precise. But is any of this factual? Well, for the most part, Talbot Mundy's published work which outlines his findings and theories about Ashoka's secret organizations is the closest we have to published research work on the organization. Also, some manuscripts were discovered in Tibet which India did not take seriously. China, however, took these texts and stated that they would be used for scientific research on the anti-gravitational force as they were that advanced. The only explanation for such books to have existed in India is the presence of the Nine Mystery Men. There are some rumors that although Alexander Emil Jean Yersin is credited for saving the world from bubonic cholera and plague, he could only do so after traveling to Madras, India. It is believed that he may have come across some secret information of the Nine, and he traveled seeking them out to help him in the plague. This, of course, cannot be confirmed, but he was able to put a rain on the plague after visiting Madras. There is also the purity of the water of the Genghis, which is a mystery to many to this day. The river remains uncontaminated despite the fact that pilgrims with infectious diseases continue to take a dip in it every day. Jack Oliot, a French lecturer, barrister, and colonial judge believes this secret society may have invented the technology in the riverbed that generates radiation and keeps the riverbed pure. But this too cannot be verified, since the dealings of the organization are very secret and tightly lipped. I could go on and on, but there would never be enough evidence to prove if they really existed, because if they did, by their very nature the society would have been designed to be secretive. But let's step back and think about it. Unlike many other secret societies we know of from the West that may have motives of running the world or being on the top, this one seeks to help and preserve humanity. That alone is something they ought to be praised for. If they do exist, then Ashoka the Great has really done a great job and built a truly wonderful secret society that may be contributing to the knowledge in the world from the background and keeping that which is potentially dangerous from the rest of mankind. Irrespective of how anyone feels about Ashoka's nine mystery men, no one can deny the contributions of India to the world as we know it and its impact on its development. Right from the early stages of civilization, the contributions of India have remained pronounced and prominent, some of which were even considered very advanced for their time, even by today's standards. In case you did not know, a significant amount of the world's major mathematical concepts can be traced to India. The concept of zero, the decimal system, negative numbers, arithmetic, trigonomic functions, and algebra are all from India. Ancient India is thought to have been performing complex mathematical calculations. And it is not just mathematics, the contributions of India cut across all the areas we discussed earlier. It's no secret that ancient India had an edge over its contemporaries back then. So even without the Nine, India is pretty amazing and has done a lot for our world as we know it. If the little we know about the Nine turns out to be true and factual as well, it takes everything to a whole new level. But what do you think? What are your thoughts concerning the Nine? Share them with us in the comments section. And if you like today's video and want more, like the video and hit the subscribe button. The next video will be sure to blow you away.